Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our last lecture for 22T1. I feel like it's been a long time since I've seen a lot of you, but I guess that's because we just had a late lecture in week, um, week 11. Um, we don't have many people here today, as you'd expect. We had, uh, at the time of this recording, we had an assignment due not long ago, about 10 hours ago. Um, so naturally, there's going to be uh, quite a lot of people who are very exhausted. So hello to the seven or so people we have here. Um, we are at the end of the course. And what that means is that the last thing that we have to talk about together is the final exam. And that's pretty much all of tonight is about. Now, it is going to be a pretty quick lecture, uh, purely because it's, it's really just conveying some information that you already have. Um, there's been a couple of technical glitches that by the time 99% of you watch this, it'll be sorted. Um, but for those here tonight, I guess uh, it'll, it'll just be a... You'll just have to understand what I'm talking about. But I'm just pulling up... Um, I'm just getting onto Eccles at the moment and going to the exam page. So all of the stuff that we're talking about tonight is actually sitting on this exam page, which is great because, you know, you can go and refer to it any time. And all we're really going to do is just, I'm just going to take you through this page slowly. We're going to talk about it. Um, if anyone's done a previous course with me, 1531, 6080, sorry, 6771, uh, you'll be familiar with a great deal of this. So it's very likely you can maybe uh, skip the requirements and the date time and the platform and maybe the communication and help parts, which is a lot of it. Um, but I'll still go through it nonetheless because we, we do have people with, you know, who forget stuff and a bunch of postgraduates as well. So, uh, looking at it, first thing is on the exam day, one of the most important things you need to make sure you are in a, a position to do is actually sit the exam in terms of your physical and mental health, right? Um, and what I mean by that is that if you are in a state where you feel you are not able to complete the exam due to some kind of illness or ongoing condition that you might otherwise apply for special consideration, then you should not sit the exam. Uh, if you do sit the exam, the act of starting the exam, the act of going on to GitLab, cloning the repo for the exam, these are all things that deem you fit to sit, which basically means that except for exceptional circumstances, you waive the right to apply for special consideration. So essentially it's like, for, particularly for pre-existing conditions. And what that means is very simple. It's like, if you um, wake up at 5 a.m. on exam day, really sick, you've got food poisoning, uh, and you start the exam at 2 p.m., and about an hour into the exam, you think, oh gosh, I'm, I'm so, I feel so sick. I thought I'd be okay, but I'm not. Um, then it becomes really difficult to apply for special consideration because you already knew you weren't well. Uh, so in the case of, for instance, if you do wake up with food poisoning, it's important that you simply um, don't sit the exam, right? That's what we want to happen in that scenario. Uh, if you are well enough, then sit the exam, obviously. Now, a more interesting question then becomes what happens... Um, uh, what happens if like you get sick during the exam, right? Like if something happens like mid-exam that you can't expect. If that happens, that's okay. These things happen. Um, we've definitely had people who uh, have had some kind of emergencies or, you know, um, the ambulances come for some reason in the middle of their exam. In those particular cases, then it is okay to, you know, stop halfway through the exam and apply for special consideration. Um, if during the exam you do feel unwell, follow these steps, stop working, take some notes of things, email me immediately at CS6080, immediately apply for special consideration, um, and then uh, send some stuff after. But to be perfectly honest, the most important thing is number two. Uh, you know, quick email, you know, three lines, I have to stop the exam. Um, then later on, give me some more information. Because what happens is if you apply for special consideration in the scenario where the exam has started, um, UNSW always comes to me and says, did they start the exam? Did you know that they stopped? And I, 
and and was there a reason like did they inform you basically so that's why that's important now in terms of when the exam is so the when aspect of this um and i guess the duration which is part of that so the final exam is a three hour exam it's just three hours and it's 2 p.m to 5 p.m on it says coming soon but it's the 10th of may you'd know this because it's in your exam timetable um <clears throat> This next line is, is kind of a bit more from a world that was ravaged by COVID a lot more. Uh, basically, because this is an afternoon exam, if you're in any of the Indo-Asia area, India, um, Southeast Asia, mainland China, lots of these places, you just sit the exam earlier. So if you are in, for instance, um, you know, parts of mainland China, then you are going to sit the exam at a time that's 2 p.m., not 2 p.m., it's going to be earlier for you there won't be any adjustments. Um, if you are in Europe, uh, you know, Africa, South America, North America, uh, way out of those time zones, then please email me. There might be one or two people in that scenario. We can arrange a slightly different time, uh, particularly for the Americas, because I think that's... Anyway, one of them is much worse than the other. One of them's manageable. I can never quite remember. <clears throat> I feel like actually the west coast of the US is somewhat okay, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect most of you. Um, in terms of the exam structure, like what the exam actually is, the exam is going to be worth X marks. And when I say X, that's not like a to-do. That's not like I'm going to go fill that in later. It's just going to be worth X marks. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It could be worth 30, 50, 100, 3,000. But whatever those marks are, it makes up. 25% of the course. That one actually looks like a typo I might have missed. I think I put this together before term, just before I updated the course outline. I did. Okay. Sorry about that. I'll fix that up. So when you're watching this recording, that'll say 20% on the on the site. <clears throat> um, so it is... Let me just make a note of that. Um, so it is worth 20% of the course. Very small. It's the smallest it's ever been. Um, I do that because I care for you and I want you to be not very stressed um, so it should be very light now I've mentioned this to you and I'll mention this to you in a notice tomorrow but we intend to get your assignment three marks back to you before your exam and why that's exciting is because that means that you'll have 80 of the marks out of 100 done in the course and you only need 50 to pass so if you're a student I mean what's what's 80 out of 100 uh, um, or 50 out of 80 or something what is it how's it work Oh my god, I can't do maths. If you've done 80 marks so far, then... Oh, no, never mind. So if you've scored an average across assignment 1, 2, and 3 of 62.5%, you've passed the course before the exam. And that's very exciting because I love having as many people go into the exam as possible um, who've passed the course because then the exam's just a question of what mark you get, not whether you have to worry about if your life's going to be fundamentally different. Um, the exam is going to be very, very similar to assignment three. So assignment three is the one you just finished. I'm sure you're excited to do more stuff with assignment three. Um, however, it's going to be simpler. So in assignment three, we were like, you know, here's some feature sets, testing, mobile, UI, UX, accessibility, linting, bonus marks, all of this. But for the final exam, it's, it's very simple. It's basically the features or milestones and mobile responsiveness, and that's it. Basically, the tutor doesn't look at your source code. So no testing, no looking at your source code, don't care about UI, UX. All we care about is, does it work as we say? And um, is it mobile responsive? You know, does, does it actually like work on desktop, tablet, and mobile? Um, so as, I, as, as, as is written below that, the main difference is compared to assignment three that the exam is substantially less work. So when I say it's like similar to assignment three, I don't mean that in the sense of, um, uh, you know, it will, it's like doing it again. I mean that in the sense that it's going to be a React app. You have to code stuff. Other areas that's simple besides no linting, code design, accessibility, UI, UX, is that there's, there'll be no backend, which means basically like, nearly no fetching, which means very, very little asynchronicity. Uh, and I forgot the other one, but there was one there on my mind. Um, 
nope, I've forgotten it. I was thinking probably async and backend. So it's really, 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 really simple uh, comparatively. So, um, you know, it's probably like, I don't know, 10 times less, some, some, some amount, some very large number. I don't want to give a number because then no matter, never give numbers because you're wrong always. Um, okay, so that's the exam. We're going to talk about what that actually looks like, but think for right now, it's a really reduced assignment three that's very uh, end result focused. Um, so again, we don't mark your source code. Hack away all you want. Um, before I get onto platform and communication, I do want to maybe take a step back just to talk about the purpose of this assignment. So I used to really hate closed book exams. I think everyone did, right, in a sense. Um, it was like, why, why do we lock students in a room and ask them to produce information that they can Google, right? And so for the longest time, I thought I hated uh, exams, which I, I kind of do. But what I, what I then later realized was that, because people always say two things. One would be like, it's so stupid having to work without the internet. True. The other one would be, it's crazy to work under time pressure. In the real world, you don't have time pressure like this. Mostly true. I think that's mostly true in terms of your development. Now, why I say this is the there's a couple of reasons why we even have an exam. Sorry to, to go on a tangent, but I think this is important. The first reason is because the alternative is that you have bigger assessments in a way, i.e. your assessment weights go up and you have more to do during term. So it's like, what's the point of putting more pressure on you during term and then the last four weeks of like study and exams, you just have nothing to do for 60, 80, right? It's better to distribute it. So that's why we have the exam. It's like a way to distribute work across the term. The second reason though, is because there is actually in my experience in industry, there is some value in putting you under pressure to produce some things in a, in a somewhat controlled amount of time. Um, not perfectly, which is also why we don't mark style, right? And what I mean by that is that in, in, in pretty much every industry job I've worked in, um, in web, at some point, some, somewhat semi-regularly, more regularly than I guess I'd like, it's kind of like, a, oh, you know, we need to get this done and we need to get it done today. That happens a lot. What doesn't happen is, unless you're an a-hole, no one ever tells you that and says, we want you to write perfectly designed style code no one says we want you to do that, but it needs to be super accessible and have great UI. But sometimes it's like, no, we actually need to solve this problem today um, or you know, in, in this two days or three hours or something like that. So there is some merit, a small amount of merit, not a large amount of merit in um, being able to assess your ability to work quickly, especially with the internet, right? Because with the internet, you know, you, all the problems at your fingertips. So anyway, that's, that's the reason that um, also there's no alternative like we just, this three hour exam, pretty sure UNSW's just like slammed it down and been like, I, I think they say it has to be three hours now, no more 24 hours or four hours or something. So just for all the people who are gonna ask me all the inevitable questions, you know, why is it three hours? Why are we doing that? Why are we doing this? Answer is I care about you and your well being and your general intellectual growth. So that's how we've ended up here. Now, how you do the exam is like assignment three, the exam's distributed via GitLab just like assignment three was distributed by GitLab um, and it's released like a repo to you. Uh, in this sense, it's kind of more like assignment two because it's not group based, right? Remember how with assignment two, it was just like added to your repo. It wasn't like a group thing. So it's, it's kind of similar to assignment two in that way. Um, you can complete the exam locally or in VLAB. Most of you are doing things locally. I'd still recommend doing it locally, um, but you can do it on VLAB if you really want. As I've said in the forum, CSE has been really painfully slow at upgrading Node. I've sent like two follow-ups in the last month or two. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend using VLAB, though I think you could. The exam's gonna be sufficiently simple that VLAB should be fine. Um, it's also important to know that technical issues relating to your local environment are not grounds for special consideration. And what that means is if you're like, oh, uh, I can't get yarn to work, we're gonna to say to you, why did you not get it working on the sample exam? Because that's one of the things we give you is we actually give you like a sample exam that's really similar and like actually it's identical in general structure to the final exam. So it's like, you can go do the sample exam and when you go do the final exam, it'll be like the exact same thing, but with different content, you know what I mean? Like this, you'll go through the exact same process and pushing and like 
pretty much identical. And and I've spent some time trying to set that up so that when you go into the final exam, you're like, whew, okay, I'm totally prepared for this. Um, okay, so Logan has asked as a follow-up. Hey, Hayden, quick question. Do we have access to update NPM and Node on the CSE machine? Trying to run one of my React projects on CSE machine, but NPM and Node version is too low. So... Basically, no one has, me too, don't have like global like pseudo admin permissions on the CSE machine. So I can't just go and update it. I have to ask them to update it. Um, I have asked them to update it is the short answer. Um, that's kind of more important. I'm actually asking them that for other top secret reasons. And well, it's not that secret. Uh, that was a bit unnecessarily dramatic um, for another course, but um, yeah, I don't think it's going to get updated for the final exam. But if it does, that'd be great. But I don't think you could rely on it. Um, my experience is that most of, like, so with the final exam, pretty much all you're going to be doing is just building a, a React app and it'll just be front end only. So I, you're not going to be using Material UI or any of that probably. You can if you want, but I, I wouldn't. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd, I feel like it should be fine. I feel like I feel like React apps on the CSC machine go okay. I feel like it only gets weird once you start doing strange things like installing bunches of libraries and Enzyme and I've seen the errors on the forum, but um, may maybe it's getting even worse, but I'm doing my best to fix it. Um, so just like your assignment, when you finish the exam, um, you push your work to the master branch on GitLab. Um, I am going to remove this line and ensure that your code works as expected in the VLAB environment. That's old. So again, Node hasn't been updated on CSE since I started teaching JavaScript and CSE. So this line used to be true when we used to be able to teach students that. Um, I proofread this three times, but sorry, sometimes you're not thinking that deeply when you're like looking for grammar problems. Um, so this line will be gone by the time the recordings watch. We don't expect you to test on the VLAB. Just locally, just Chrome. I will update that to just Chrome because that's what we say in the assignments um, to keep it nice and simple. Um, do not leave it to the deadline to push to your code to master. Yeah, submit each question when you finish working on it. Yeah, basically push to master regularly. Um, the work. This is bad for you. Don't don't like work on it locally and then like two minutes before the end of the exam try and push it up and then you. You have a problem as like a file permission or like something like this happens every time. It doesn't matter how many I could I could spend the next two hours just telling you that on repeat, and someone will do it. But I will still try my best. Push regularly. It also is just good for you. Like I just feel bad for you. You don't need the stress of like the stress. You know, just the stress of of. Uh, your code not like if you push it regularly then if something terrible happens in the last 15 minutes you know that you're only dealing with 15 minutes of work not three hours so please please consider that all right so a very big section here communication and help during the exam okay the exam's open book um you can use the internet stack overflow lecture notes tutorial code your own assignments doesn't really matter you can use anything you want um it's it's just it's fair game it's output driven all the resources whilst you can do stuff on the internet you can't plagiarize resources i i w won't lie i don't think you'd be able to plagiarize it i think the exam questions are sufficiently small and sufficiently unique i don't think you're going to google it um, and when i say you can't plagiarize these resources when i say you you don't need to worry about it what i mean is that you, you're not going to have plagiarism problems copying from stack overflow you might have plagiarism problems if you copy from another person, like another student or something, but we'll get to that in a sec. You are prohibited from seeking help from other students during the exam. Okay. You can't chat to any other students or anyone else who you could imagine is associated with the school or the course during the exam. What that means is that no one in this course, probably no one else in CSE, your cousin who did this course two years ago and is now a graduate at Optiva, no. Um, your parents who are senior developers at Atlassian, no. I, you know what I mean? Like you, you can't get help. I always, I always tell students with the exam, it's like, go into the exam, 
as if the world is functioning and you have access to all of the technology, but everyone's dead. You know, no one is around. It's just you left here on this planet with the internet. Now, that I'm sure will be difficult in five or six years when we have AI and bots that write code for you. But for now, it's a simple enough analogy that works. So that's how you need to approach the situation. Um, even after you finish the exam, on the day of the exam, I don't know why it's repeated twice, on the day of the exam, on the day of the exam, do not communicate your answers to anyone. Um, this is because some students uh, do finish the exam late. So it is prohibited that like, you can't discuss the specifics of the exam for basically the rest of the day after the exam. Um, I'm not saying you can't talk to people about your experience. Like you can't say like, you can't, it's not like you can't say, oh my God, how was the exam? It was good. It was a little bit stressful, but it's more like, don't be like, oh, let me send you my solution. And then this is how I solved that problem because you don't know um, who's got what situations. You don't know if your friend had a power outage for half an hour and they have to continue the exam, blah, blah, blah. So just, just the day of the exam, be very cautious of that. Um, do not place your exam work in any location, including file sharing services such as Dropbox or GitHub accessible to any other person. Ensure during the exam that no other person in your household can access your work. So essentially, it's your responsibility to keep your code private. You can't use the excuse, oh, I just put it up on GitHub. I didn't know that it wasn't part private. My friend just happened to copy it. The fact that it ended up on GitHub and it wasn't private is your responsibility. So you have to be an adult in these situations and make sure that you are not putting your code anywhere stupid. Now I'll be really clear. None of you really need to worry about that because the people who worry, <laughs> the people who this rule's designed for are the ones who are trying to cheat. You know, the ones who like accidentally make their code public so their friend could copy it. So when they get caught, they're like, mm, I didn't know that. Um, so don't stress about that one, but that's fair warning to people in advance who are going to cheat. Speak, uh, I'll get to, yeah, I'll get to cheating in the next point. And you can't share your Zeb pass with another person. That's another way people have tried to get around this. They say, I didn't share my code. I didn't do this, but you know, uh, Larry over here, oh, they must have remembered my Zed pass when I gave it to them a year ago. It, again, it's your responsibility to keep your credentials private. So please remember that. Now, if you violate the exam conditions, you will get a zero for the course. Um, and in certain scenarios, we will refer you to the student integrity group uh, as a serious plagiarism or cheating misconduct. This happens every term. Every term in every course I've ever taught, someone cheats on the exam. Sometimes many people, sometimes not many people. My advice to you all is not to cheat on this exam in particular because the majority of you will pass already. Or just with a little bit of effort, you will pass the exam. Okay? There is nothing worse. I have seen students rank third in the course, cheat on an exam they didn't need to cheat on, and fail the course. So just, just please don't be... I just get sad for you again, so please don't be reckless. Now, um, if during the exam... Um, that was all the angry stuff, you know, like, don't cheat and whatnot. But on the, on the more friendly, helpful stuff, if you do have questions or clarifications that you need to ask during the exam, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making a private forum post. So what we do during the exam is that we go and make all of the posts um, private so you can't post publicly anymore and if you have a question during the exam that isn't related to I have to stop because of an emergency you post it on the forum just the forum don't email me you'll get an answer slower um, so you post it on the forum the forum is the same forum we've been using all term you're all invited to it at the start of the term if you enrolled late you can just click on it to enroll for anyone who's never gone on the forum all term it takes all of five seconds um, don't email, don't message on Teams, don't call me. Sometimes students find my number and I get text messages from them. Um, when you do post on the forum, when you do go make a new post, make sure that your code's up to date on GitLab in case we need to quickly debug it. Um, make sure that screenshots uh, of the issue are visible. Please don't say things like, oh, Yarn, is, Yarn installs giving me an error because what happens is, is that 
we just say you need to explain it more and then it takes longer to get an answer. So take the extra 30 seconds to elaborate so that we can help you quickly. Um, explain how you produced um, the issue and uh, whether or not you're running it locally or in VLAB. Now, what I don't want to give the impression of here is that we, we can't help you like debug your code. So if you're like, oh, uh, my, my fetch is failing and my set function is not updating, we can't help you, it's an exam. If you say that um, I can't clone from my Git repo or uh, you're having something that's unrelated to the content we're doing. So for instance, if, if you have like a, you're like, you're getting a node version error or something, like we'll help you as long as it doesn't actually relate to front end programming then we can't help you. Obviously, we will clarify things too. Um, that's totally fine. So we will actually, you know, clarify any uh, any any questions you have um, about the spec. So that's all fair game as well. Um, yep. Uh, and for the final exam, there will not be a submit command. That's because you all submitted at the same time. So at the end of the exam, um, we just take what you uh, have put in and we just mark it. So there is no submit command. We just take master at 5 p.m. the end of the exam, done, easy. Um, if you are having trouble, whoops, sorry. If you are having issues working on the exam at CSE, you can follow these instructions. As I said, I don't think many people will be affected by that because most of you will not be doing this on CSE. Now, to prepare for the exam, it is based on React and I guess a little bit of CSS, but predominantly React. Um, to prepare, you can review the previous Toots labs. Obviously, we yeah, Toots and labs are the same thing now because we combine them. Um, and your assignments, particularly assignment three. And that's how you can help stay confident with things. So we have tons and tons and tons and tons of resources for you. Plenty of stuff, right? Um, there's nothing kind of stopping you. Now, what we do have is we do actually have a sample exam. Oh, I did, I did get this ready. Sorry, I thought I didn't. Silly me. So, we do have a sample exam. Um, I just need to connect that. So let me log into VLAB, sorry. Um, There we go. Okay, so I've got a sample exam here, um, which you can look at, and this is <clears throat> this is an actual past exam, um, and it's it's you just follow the link. Um, it's all yours, like to, to play with, and you can go and you can go and do this basically. Um, now, where thing the only part that's not ready for you for those watching tonight, but will be ready for those watching next time, is that um, this personal exam repository it links you to a repo which doesn't exist right now because I, I I realized it failed to create, but I'll show you what it looks like on this lecture because um, it looks the same every time. But this gets deployed to your repo, so you know how like you have an assignment one and assignment two repo. Basically, you'll you'll soon have another repo called Exam Sample, and it's actually just to create React app. It's like your assignment three starter code. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just there so that you don't have to run um, npx create React app. That's pretty much it. So this is what the final exam is. In this case, it's basically like, hey, we want you to go and build this stuff. Go and build a document, header and footer, 10 marks. Here's all the specifics. It's really specific in the exam. This makes you less worried about, you know, what you do or don't have to do. Build a dashboard, and then we ask you to build three simple web games, really simple games in React. Um, you can go and play with that all you want. Um, we don't share source code solution for the final exam, but what we do do is we do share a, um, there's, there's, a there's like a nav bar right behind my head here. Um, there um, we do share like a solution so you can actually kind of go see an example of what um, here's a simple game there you go correct yay what's this one banana cakes yay French 
post. So you know, not not too, not too crazy. You know, um, is that Hawaii pizza? I made these up. Holy hell, that's not a real thing. Um, so th this is basically what the exam is. So it's like, oh, header, footer, main page, home page, few cute little games. You know. Uh, and this will give you a good sense of like the kind of comfort levels you should have going into the exam in terms of what you do and don't know. So that sample exam's all here. It's linked on the Eccles exam page, easy to find. When you click on this personal exam repo link sometime before nine o'clock probably, um, that'll go to the right place. Um, right now it tries to take you to the personal exam repo for last term. Um, I'll fix that up, don't worry. And yeah, uh, that's that's it. So there's the sample exam and there's the solution. So I've tried really hard uh, to help make things easy for you. This is the best prepared I think I've ever been able to make any group of students, which so hopefully that's really helpful. Um, I actually think it's okay. Like, I know I'm talking a lot tonight, but it's like, you already know this stuff. If you've done assignment three, you're like an expert on this already. Like, you, you could, I'm sure, if you did assignment three and you did like the majority of it, you could sit the exam tomorrow and you'd be fine in the sense that, you know, you'd get nearly all of it. Like, you just have to... So, like, what you're doing between now and the exam is, is getting very comfortable. Because the what the exam helps distinguish is people who kind of know things from people who really know things. Because at the end of the day, if you're more confident with things, that's less Googling, less docs you have to read, less mistakes you're going to make, more errors that you understand and therefore can debug quicker. Um, so, you know, for a typical student in 68, it's like, oh, I've done 80% of the course. Great. I got this little 20% exam. I've probably passed the course. Um, I already know the content, but you know what? How about we'll go through some of the React shoots again and I'll look through some of the questions and maybe uh, particularly some of the, um, let me look at them right now with you. Let's, uh, let's sort by React.js. Um, you know, uh, this, uh, the intro, tic tac, tic tac toe is a great one. That's a really great one. It gets you familiar with kind of feeling like games. Um, full stack interaction, sure. CSS, sure. 2048, sure. Yes, another great one. Um, React SPA with state, yeah. I mean, th these are all very early ones. React router example, yes. Clean up React JS, probably not. I mean, like you can, it's just, it's not going to change your world. Code review won't change your world. That won't change your world. Custom hooks quite advanced. Doesn't really matter. Convert function to class. Doesn't really matter. UI framework. Maybe. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a UI framework in the exam. You just don't need it. You can see in this case, someone's clearly used Bootstrap, but there's no marks. For like style, so only use it if it somehow makes you feel like you're gonna do a better, quicker job. Um, I wouldn't. I would just use buttons and stuff. Um, use effect timeout explore. Yes, I think that one's worth it. And auth jwt. No, I don't. And complicated use effect. Yeah, probably. Why not? Um, so that's the landscape of it. I don't think the exam is going to be very CSS heavy. As you can see here, like there's not a lot of CSS. I don't even know if this one works. Oh, this one does work. Okay. By the way, I pretty much grabbed like the best student for this. So if you're like, when I say sample exam, this is like a really good, this is like a really good sample, sample exam. So, um, <coughs> yeah, so that's, that's it. That's, yeah. Uh, air fun. What would be the average mark for the exams for previous terms? Oh. I don't know. Um, what I can tell you is that the exam is the one assessment that I scale. Um, and I scale it relatively aggressively. I always get questions. How much do you scale it by? It's like, I don't know. There's, there's, it's not like we have a number. It's not like we just double it. Um, we just we, we move it around because different exam like okay so the the purpose of scaling is to make sure that you have a somewhat normal looking distribution right because sometimes you'll see a final exam and the final exam you know if, if this is your chart and let's say this is 50 
and you know this is like a credit and a distinction and an HD sometimes you have things that like you know look like that that'd be really bad but you know typically you know you have something that looks like this and now what you want to do is you want to like kind of take this chunk and like bring them up here just like shift everyone up but you shift people up a little bit depending on how dense it is and stuff um, it's not a hard science but the point is that it depends on how hard the exam is because the thing is we think we know how hard the exam is like I write it I get some tutors to do it so tutors have practiced with it but it might be harder or easier than I expect and if it's easier than I expect and people brush through it like breeze through it sorry there's a little less scaling and if it's harder than I expect then there's more scaling um, what I tell you is what I tell students is that I try and write the exam the ideal exam for me is one where um, one student um, one student gets a hundred percent that's good because if, if 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 no one can finish like if no one can do it all perfectly it's too hard I think and if many people do it perfectly I don't think it it's it's challenging enough to separate it because the the worst thing I can do for an exam is have someone who's like who's like a four out of five star student and a five out of five star student get the same mark because um, I want to help distinguish people. I want to help, and I, again, this is coming from someone who was a bad student at uni. I was like, I was lazy, and I had a lot of very bad exams. <coughs> I think the worst exam I did, I got. Oh God, <coughs> what's what's the numbers? It's twelve divided by sixty. Twenty percent. That was the worst exam I ever did. I got twenty percent on the exam. Um, so. Yeah, anyway, my point is that we scale it. So to your question about what's the average mark, I don't I don't know. I don't I, I, if I if I knew I looked it up, I wouldn't tell you because it doesn't teach you anything. But what I'll give you an example of is that typically what happens is that, for example, this exam's out of twenty. So normally you might say, Oh, ten out of twenty is a pass. Not that a pass makes any sense here because it's just a mark and it's not like I don't know what people mean when they say I passed the exam. It's like, it's just a mark out of 20 guys. It's just a mark. So, but what I'm saying is that typically, for instance, a score of four out of 20 might scale to a 10 out of 20. And, you know, a score of one out of 20 might scale to like a three out of 20. And, a, you know, a, a, a score of 10 out of 20 might scale to like a 15 out of 20. And then like a 15 out of 20 might score to an 18 out of 20 and something like this, right? Maybe. Um, but here's, here's like a bit of an indicator. And what you'll often see is that there's a very low threshold to do okay. Because what we typically expect from a passing student in, um, say, this particular sample exam, which is made up of like some headers, footers, a dashboard, and three games, is we think a passing student, a student who is square on average, right? Uh, the Like the average student will be able to do the document header and footer, the dashboard, one of the games, and they'll be able to like half do another game, right? That's like your average student. And when I say half do, I mean like they'll start it and they'll maybe do a couple things, but it's broken, right? So that's where like the median student probably lies. And that that's kind of the best thing I can give you, if that makes sense. Like if you look at yourself and you think, I feel like a pretty median student. I feel like half the students in 6080 are less smart than me and half are smarter than me. Um, then yeah, you'd probably, you'd probably be able to do this and this and this and half of that or something like that. Um, if you're a past student and that means you're probably like the bottom at the top of the bottom 20%, right? Like a, like a past student is, if this if this is like if this is the best student and that's the worst student, a past student is like here, maybe that might even be a bit generous. It's, I mean, it's just lines on it, as if that's accurate. Um, a past student will probably do like these two things. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of logic in the early part. Like the exam is very intentionally designed so that it starts off very like CSS -y and literal. You know, so you're not going to get lost in logic. And then it kind of starts to move on to a bit more logic -y. And then as you get into the games, that's where you have to start being familiar with use effect and use state and stuff like that. So it does kind of build on itself pretty quickly. Now, 
Another thing that's important to note with the final exam is that um, don't let your OCD overcome you and have to and feel like you have to do everything. It's totally normal to skip stuff. When the tutors mark you, they will literally go through this with a pen. Not, I don't know why I said literally. They'll figuratively go through this with a pen and go tick, 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 cross, cross, tick, tick. So if you see something, like, uh, okay, um, what's an example? Has a background color of gray. Man, that's easy marks. Awesome. I'll do it. One mark. Okay, it's not fixed to the bottom of the viewport, but instead fixed to the point. I don't care. Too complicated. I'll move on. Do you know what I mean? Like, get into that mentality. And, and um, when you do it, I would encourage you the first time you do it to, to do it that way too. Um, so just like quite literally, like be very ruthless with it. Decide what you think is worth it or not worth it. Um, so, you know, something like this, five marks easy hard like you figure it out we don't it, it's like it's designed that you can most of the time in this you can skip things um, if you really want to sometimes it's more complicated particularly with the games because the games like you can't like do the finish screen for a game if the game doesn't work you know but um, you get the idea uh, we do share with you some short videos of how the games man I love Grammarly ads um, oh my god, it's me! Yeah, so in this case, it's like... I'm explaining something. Man, this is an old video. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, that's it. We do these so that, like, um, when you enter the exam, if, if you can't visualize something, which we understand, right? Like, there are people who just struggle to to conceptualize things quickly i think it's reasonable for like an assignment for me to describe something to you in text and expect you to try and conceptualize it but i i think that's a bit more unfair in an exam you know like to say you know go think about this for a day or two is okay but for me to be like all right you got 30 seconds and if you can't think of it in 30 seconds you're about to get real anxious and you're about to get really stressed that's a bit more mean so it's a lot more mean um, so that's why the videos are there, so that you can um, click on them. I'm not frozen, I'm just thinking. Um, that's it. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, any questions? We'll kind of wrap up close to seven, unless there's a whole bucket of questions from people. Um, so again, if you have any questions to ask, ask them in the next couple of minutes, just so, just so the recording doesn't drag on forever. Um, as I said, so after the exam, there's a few random typos and stuff I pointed out after the lecture. There's a few random typos and stuff that I'll go fix up. Um, then the other aspect is that I will, um, make sure that the link works. So in the sample exam, the link to the personal exam repository should work. It's your repo. So you can go and actually push to it like it's the final exam. And in fact, you can use your sample exam in your final exam if you really want to. It's up to you. Like, this isn't meant to be, like, mean. It's, just, it's meant to be, like, you know, let's, let's get out of your way and, and let you demonstrate your knowledge in a little, in a, in a, in a slightly more intense environment than you're used to. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Roger's question. Can we still have access to the resource in this course after this term? Uh, yes. As long as you're a CSE student, you have access to GitLab. As long as you're a UNSW student, you should have access to Eccles. And my YouTube videos are on the internet. So that's, that's as much as I know. Um, Brian says, it sounds like there'll be no component testing involved or UI testing. Correct. It was only in assignment three and it was worth a fairly small amount. Um, it's, not the, it's not the funnest topic. It's a hard topic to do in an introductory course. We just like to do a little bit of it. Um, so yeah, no testing. No testing, no linting, no UI, UX, no code quality. None of that. Just, just, just you and making things happen on the screen.
That's it. Code, screen, code, screen, code, screen. Tick, 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 tick. Really contained. It's, I think it's, it's kind of nice, like kind of fun. After like a couple of assignments with backends and all this other crap going on, it's like, no, we just get to do something simple. Um, Sunny says, are there any limitations on what we can or can't use during the exam? Same as assignment three. Any library um, can't be like Angular or Vue.js. Just because we don't know how to, in well, there's no guarantee that tutors know how to interpret it correctly if, if, they, if they ever had to look at your source code for some reason, like it was broken. Um, oh yes, also, um, if for some reason your code totally breaks, like it just does not even run, like it gives like an error when we yarn install it, we will, we will reach out to you to give you a chance to fix it. And then and remark it with some kind of penalty potentially. So um, don't stress about that. We'll make sure. Like I, I have a big, passionate comment that you know I, I never want someone in, to fail a course based on a technicality. You know. So you know if if you got like forty nine out of fifty before the course and you need one mark to pass, and your exam failed because you used a version of a library that is experimental and doesn't work on anyone else's computer we will let you go and fix that and use a different you know we'll let you change the the dependency version and remark it kind of thing um but you know if if if, if you if you fail if you do terribly on the exam because you just didn't push much code there's not much we can do about that um Okay, well, whilst I wait to see if there's any straggling questions, um, let me take the moment to say thank you for an excellent term. Um, you've all been awesome, those of you watching at home now and in the future. Um, I love teaching this course. It's my favorite course to teach. I mean, I, I helped create the course, so you'd hope so. Uh, but uh, it's always just so much fun. And as I mentioned in my forum post, that you're all awesome which you are, if you haven't read it. Um, I think it's so cool seeing what people learn in such a short amount of time. So again, every time every time it's been tiring or challenging or you've doubt doubted yourself, just remember um, how, how much you're able to do. And, and if you really, if you really have, you know, learned something, but it's, it's been stressful or maybe you made some mistakes and didn't get the marks you want, at least if nothing else, you should walk away knowing that um, you've started your skill development in an area that the industry deems to be invaluable these days. So um, if you've done this course that you, you could probably go out there, you could, you could go on f contractor websites, go look for jobs. There's always someone out there looking for some kind of work. So um, all good news at the end of the day. Once, once all the dust settles and you get some good nights of sleep and you get some space from... Um, a busy term because I'm sure you've been dealing with like other courses as well um, then I think you'll be uh, I think you'll feel substantially substantially like better and you'll, you'll realize kind of how awesome it's all been um, William says am I teaching the C++ course next term I'm not teaching it I don't know if I'm still down on the website that's teaching it um, I can't comment more than that I'm not on the website anymore. Great. Okay. Well, that's good. At least it's accurate. Um, no, I'm not teaching C++ next term. Uh, I'm teaching 1531 next term um, because it's running in T2 now and I can't teach two courses because I have a company to run, which is very demanding. So uh, I love spending my evenings with all of you, um, but I couldn't do two of these at the same time. So um, it's been great. And Thank you to some of the, the people in the course who've been extremely helpful on the forum as well. Um, I think Sarah, shout out. Um, uh, Jimmy, uh, let me look. Actually, you know what? I'm going to look I'm gonna look at the stats right now. That's going to be one of the last things I do. Let me look at the analytics. And I've never done this before. I should. It's a very good idea. Okay. So, analytics discussion. Here we go. A couple of wrap-up things. Very exciting. Okay, participation. 
Looks like you all beat me on that one. Uh, good job. Uh, views, okay. Well, you can see the three assignments, can't you? Bam, bam, and bam. Um, as expected, assignment two is actually kind of harder for people. Uh, I know that sounds funny to some of you who found assignment three particularly hard, but it's, it's hard to explain. It's like assignment two, you're battling with the idea of JavaScript and asynchronicity and the DOM and web, it's so much. Um, assignment three is you're just kind of battling with React and you, you've, got the, you've got a grip on what the web is a bit more. Um, okay, top contributors. So yes, big thank you to Sarah, big thank you to Tim, particularly early on in the course. Jimmy, Rag, Cav, Sonny, Darian. Hey, Sonny. Sonny's in this call. Um, I, <laughs> that's a lot of answers. Um, and Emily and Jason have been absolutely awesome. Um, and yeah, is that the top commenters, top viewers? Oh, I didn't even get top viewer. Top hearted? Oh, well, I guess that happens when you answer a lot of questions. This is so interesting. Again, Sarah Hugo. Oh, look at that. See, this is, this is interesting. Um, Hugo didn't make the top 10 answers, but Hugo came third for heartedness. And that means that Hugo has a, a very effective heart per comment ratio, I guess. So congrats, Hugo, for that. Um, but anyway, the, the point is I'm just killing on time while I was waiting for other people to ask questions. So let's wrap it up here. Um, thank you again to everyone. Um, Hopefully I'll see you around. Add me on LinkedIn. I'd love to stay in touch. Um, and we'll chat. We'll keep chatting in the lead up to the final exam. Um, and yeah, have a great evening. Hope you make it through the next couple of weeks and um, see you around. So bye-bye.